Hello, today I have something new and unique. I don't think it's a first, but there's certainly a lot less content on this device. Tag along while I explore and do the inevitable, make a power adapter out of the Flexiformer. In this video, I'm going to check out this vintage piece of technology that allowed people to build their own transformers in the lab safely and quickly. We will explore why this matters and how this can be useful to make lots of other measurements and equipment. This will be different than my normal videos, since I'm going to be exploring how this transformer works and doing some experiments with it to demonstrate how it works. The basic idea is the same as all power supplies though, so some of the principles of operation will be discussed. If you want to help out the channel, see the links on my webpage or in the description. Patreon is now live as well as the super button. Thank you to my current patrons and anyone who helps support the channel. A little history. The Flexiformer came from a relative's repair shop. It came into my possession several years ago after the relative had passed along and long after retirement, and I figured this would be a great place to show it off. If used in conjunction with other typical test equipment, like like multimeters, this can make a lot of useful measurements possible. I will check out some of those uses. So let's take a look at the Flexiformer. It is a somewhat large and heavy half transformer. The device itself has a bunch of markings on it that let us know some basic specifications. They even give us the expected error rate. 1% sounds really good. The other side of the device has some instructions for how many windings to add to calculate the expected voltage on the output side. It looks like it's a really easy device to use to get voltages on the output. You just have to do some custom wiring to make it all happen. The user manual is great for this device. It goes over lots of detail about the operation and some pre-calculated values for what we can expect for various turns of wire and output voltages. They give a good visual representation of how the device is to be used. They show how the wires should be wound around it. It looks like it talks about how to use the device for lots of different experiments too, like testing fuses, measuring current, and obviously acting like a transformer. It is amazing how many applications this simple device has. Transformers really haven't gone anywhere today, but they are much smaller and much more hidden inside the products you use. If you need an isolated variable voltage, it wasn't so easy to do this a long time ago. This device is from 1959, by the way. The Flexiformer lets you custom set up whatever you need for powering experiments and repair tasks easily and inexpensively. So what's inside this thing? This thing is basically a big coil of wire around a metal core. The core is laminated iron sheets in the shape of a toroid. This is suitable for lower frequency operation, like you get from the wall outlet, but it's not suitable for high frequencies like used in modern switching power supplies. Notice this transformer is massive when compared to a modern power adapter of the same power capability. When we go ahead and plug it in, we can see that this transformer uses about one watt of power just sitting there doing nothing. So the first application for a primary transformer core is to generate high current on the output. There are some basic formulas for how transformers work. Basically, the current is a multiple of the transformer's primary turns and the secondary turns. The formulas are presented here in this table. These are quite basic and only provided for the general characteristics of transformers. In this case, we are going to have two turns on the output and 400 turns on the input, so we should expect one amp on the input and 200 amps on the output at full load. This will only be with a very low resistance material though. We're going to test it with something a little smaller. That high potential current though can cause some conductors to get very hot and even melt pieces of metal. Let's see if we can make this wire glow. It isn't very bright, but it is glowing. Neat. Yep, that's dangerously hot now. Okay, that doesn't have much practical value, but it does demonstrate one key function of a transformer. As the voltage falls, the current is increased, and these are directly related to how many turns the transformer has. This is one key to any transformer. The use case in the user manual is for testing things like fuses. This is an automotive fuse with very corroded terminals. It has a 10 amp rating, and it fails to open when given an overload condition. The Flexiformer is specifically useful because of its flexibility in being configured in any way the user wants, time and patience allowing. Winding wires on the core is not the most fun thing out there, but if you need to get to a specific voltage, it is the only way to get there. Okay, let's turn this thing into a power adapter. The winding process is not the most enjoyable, as I said, but it doesn't take as long as waiting days or weeks for a custom transformer. So what's inside a power adapter? Well, I've done a few teardowns and you can see that there are lots of components. I'm gonna be simplifying this a lot and making a much more basic but functional five volt power supply. Here is a little block diagram of what you can normally see. Obviously, this version is gonna be a lot different than this since the transformer is first with the Flexiformer. This is how a lot of your older wall wart 
power supplies used to work. Before I went ahead and build anything, I put some basic measurements into a circuit simulator, in this case, LT Spice. This isn't a tutorial on this, but it's just some free software that you can play around with. Here, I'm using some not really power rated devices, so we won't get much current out, but it will demonstrate that it is going to work. There are tons of good tutorials on LT Spice if you want to learn the software. The regulator style I'm using here is called a linear regulator. This is fully not going to be a very efficient design. It is designed to work though, barely. Far from modern and far from high end, but it will demonstrate the power output. The circuit board I'm using is more like a permanent breadboard. They have little Lego blocks in the corners also. Kind of cool, but it looks like they aren't available anymore. Not as good as soldering, but a little faster and neater than breadboarding. The regulator has current limiting as well, so the tiny transistors don't pop. This device will supply that five volts, and I gave it a barrel plug because it's easy to connect. Using the basic calculations for transformers, we know we need about 6.6 .6 volts for the linear regulator to work. So I'm going to go with 22 windings. Time to apply some wires to this device. The type I'm using here is a center tap design with only two diodes exactly as shown in the user manual. And here it is. It isn't the most regulated device as expected with only a couple transistors and these aren't power devices so the current output is only in the 100 milliamp range. The transformer core is way oversized for this application, but it lets you test the windings ratio required for such devices. So rather than having to go and buy a custom transformer and wait for it to arrive, or having to wind 400 terms of primary yourself, this saves time and effort for making circuits powered from mains. I know today it is mostly out of date with modern DC power supplies, but this is a vintage device and it shows how things used to be done. It's a fun, Thing to learn a little bit about the history of electronics. So when talking about the power performance, this adapter is terrible, but it was expected to be. It has high idle power usage because transformers have losses in the wires and the core. And this is one reason why newer power adapters are so much more efficient. Also, this uses a linear regulator. That means that it converts a lot of that extra voltage drop just directly into heat instead of sending it over to your device. The other thing about this power adapter is the fact that it cannot support universal voltage inputs. Because the primary windings are fixed, if you increase the input voltage, you will increase the output voltage and potentially damage the transformer. This is unlike the power adapter of today that use switching regulation. This is a topic for another day though. So there we have it, the Flexiformer, a crucial building block to power supplies and transformers. I hope you have enjoyed watching as much as I did making this video. This device, even today, still has tons of applications to experimenting with low voltage power supplies or applying high currents in a more safe way than rewiring a microwave transformer. Don't do that. This device is still dangerous as it does have exposed connections on the AC side. So remember, if you want to play with one of these, you're doing so at your own risk. Hopefully you enjoyed watching the Flexiformer and learned a little something while watching. If you want to see more content like this, let me know. Next week I'm resuming the normal content, back to some power adapters. The final, for now, round of these 140 watt USB PD 3.1 adapters. Out of all of these adapters, maybe one of these will be the best. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again next week. Goodbye.